Hi, my name is Mark. So as you can probably see by the title, today we're going to talk about diminished scales. Because I don't know about you, but many times when I see people playing over a chord progression like, let's say, C minor, E major, and then D sharp diminished, or in this case half diminished, many times we see guitar players using like the C minor pentatonic scale for the minor chord. <laughs> And then a variation of it, or even trying to use the major scale over the A major chord. Then when it comes time for that diminished chord, we go straight for that ink face shape of the diminished arpeggio. And again, it's not like there's something wrong with that sort of a thing. If you like the sound of it, do it. But if you want to try something a little bit different, you may want to try some diminished scales. And sometimes using diminished scales can be a little bit weird, like which scale should I use? Should I use the whole half tone scale or the half whole tone scale? How am I supposed to use them? And in some cases, what even are those scales? Am I supposed to only use those scales over diminished chords? And those are a lot of different questions that will be all answered in different videos, because let's be honest, we don't really want an hour long video. So in today's video, we're going to talk about symmetrical diminished scales aka the whole half diminished scale and the half whole diminished scale which sort of shapes to use and how to mix it with your pentatonic scale but before i get to it i just want to say please subscribe to my channel you're probably aware that youtube's been acting a little bit weird lately even if you subscribe to the channel those channel's videos may really not show up in your subscription box and even if you ring the notification bell thingy below, you still really will not be notified of the channel's videos. So if you want to stay tuned to new videos, I highly suggest not only subscribing and turning on all the notifications, but also following me on social media. Not only do I post some exclusive stuff there, I can provide solos and jamming give her backing tracks, and generally whatever I'm up to at the moment, but I always post about my videos. Links for the usual suspects will be below, like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, even though I don't really post much on Twitter, but in general, at Martin Rick Guitar. And since you're done, then, please consider leaving a like and share this video on social media, I'd highly appreciate it. But getting back to the video itself, let's take the whole half tone scale. The reason it's called a whole tone half tone scale is because that's literally how the scale goes. Let's say A for instance. We take A and we move a whole tone. So we go from A to B and then from that B we move a half tone. Whole tone half tone, whole half tone. Then you do the same thing counting on C. And you get C, D and B flat. Then you do the same thing on E flat, and you get E flat, F, G flat. We get G flat, G sharp, and we get back to the A. So by repeating that pattern a couple of times, we get back to the note we started in. The only thing you may have noticed is that unlike some of the other scales, like your major scale, which has seven notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the eighth note being the note where it starts over again, or scales like your minor pentatonic scale, which has, like the name implies, five notes, or even your blues scale, which is a hexatonic scale, aka a six note scale. This whole tone half tone scale has eight notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we get back to the A. So it's what we call an octatonic scale. And as I mentioned before, there are two symmetrical diminished scales. This one, the whole half tone scale, then we have the opposite, the half whole tone scale. And as you can probably guess, it's pretty much the same thing as the other scale, but this time, instead of going from, let's do it in A again, instead of going whole tone, half tone, we're going half tone, whole tone. So we're going from A to B flat to C, then we're going to do the same thing on C, we're going to do C, D flat, and E flat. Let's call it E for now. Technically G flat, but whatever, F sharp, G, and we got back to the A. And if you think about it, these scales are modes of each other. If you play the whole half diminished scale in A, this can be the A whole half diminished scale, but you can also think about it as being a B half whole diminished scale. That's something that makes these scales pretty interesting, is that not only are they both symmetrical, as in they have a pattern that repeats, but they're also modes of each other. But as you can probably guess, this horizontal position isn't really very comfortable. But again, let's take it in A if you want a position for the whole half diminished scale. If we just want to do the first position, we can do something like this. And remember, because this scale is symmetrical, when we play this position, this part right here, starting on that F sharp, intervallically wise, is the same thing as when we start in A. It's whole tone, half tone. 
So this pattern right here of we can repeat it starting here and do the same thing in the string below. And again, remember, because they're symmetrical, not only can you repeat that scale position of when you go to that sixth, in this case the F sharp, you can do it a tritone above A. So a tritone above A is that E flat. So you can do. This way you can have some interesting licks. You can repeat it a tritone up, and you can repeat it at its sixth, and that it's minor third. But if you take a look at it, this whole half diminished scale has a couple of notes in common with your minor pentatonic scale. If I play you both, here's the diminished scale first. And here's your minor pentatonic. They both have an A, a C, a D, and E flat. So every time you're doing your bluesy pentatonic licks, that either focused a lot on a couple of these notes, or even if you just want to be spicy, you can throw in either that scale or a couple of diminished licks. Like we all have played this sort of lick before. Well, what notes are we playing here? We're playing A, C, D, E flat, and E. All of these notes are in the minor pentatonic scale. And all of these notes, except the E, are in your whole half diminished scale. So you can sort of modulate that leg into that diminished scale just by switching the E for a note in our whole half diminished scale. Like for instance, let's say this F sharp right here. Instead of playing landing on that E, we can land on that F sharp like. And we can even make it more obvious, as we mentioned before, uh, by taking that lick and then moving it a minor third down. And again, that sort of thing works really well if you want to spice up your legs a little bit. And again, you don't really need to use it like that, but I think this whole half diminished scale works better as a way to spice up minor chords along with your minor scale or your minor pentatonic scale or whatever. Like if we're playing over a minor chord, instead of doing this sort of pentatonic descent of going we can perhaps do something like which is straight out from your whole half diminished scale. Again, it sounds a little bit odd, and it might not be the most appropriate sound in every situation, but it's something you can try, and that I like to frequently do. Until now, we've talked mostly about the whole half the minute scale, and less about the half whole tone scale. The whole reason being that they mostly work the same way. Again, they're very similar shapes because they're modes of each other. The same way you can use the whole half the minute scale. For minor chords, I feel like the half whole diminished scale works better against major chords because the half whole diminished scale has a flat four. And even though it's a flat four and not a major third, if you just play both at the same time, you don't really know if I'm playing an A and it's major third or an A and it's flat four or even an A and it's double sharp second. So if you have like a dominant sound, for instance, as in a blues, sure, you can use your minor pentatonic scale and your major pentatonic scale, but you can also use your A half whole diminished scale, again, in the context of a blues, maybe throwing some of these spicier licks like, Again, 
again, is it something spicy? Definitely. But is it something that's unusable? No. And again, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, there's a lot we can do with diminished scales. And they're definitely not something that you can use in any situation, but they're definitely something that you can add to your playing to spice it up a little bit. That if, again, if it isn't the sound you're looking for, don't do it. But if it sounds cool to you, definitely try it out and try to add it here and there. And as I mentioned in the beginning, these are some of the ways that I like to use it. You may either not particularly enjoy it, or you may have some different ways to use the minor scales, and you can leave them in the comment section below if you want to. And as I mentioned previously, there's nothing wrong with your regular diminished vibrations. <laughs> But this is also something you can try. And if you actually try to do any of this sort of stuff and try to apply some of these sort of diminished scales to your playing, please film yourself playing them and post them on Instagram. And again, if there's anything you want to add to this discussion or there's anything you agree or did not agree, something I missed, something I should have said, leave it in the comment section below. And if you have any suggestions for videos, I have this dedicated series called Yate, You Ask, I Teach. I know, pretty bored, generic and self-explanatory title, but as you can probably guess, and as the name implies, in that series I pretty much teach anything you guys have in the comment section below, well, at least guitar or music related of course, so if you have something you want me to talk about, just leave it in the comment section below with the hashtag Yate. And since we're talking about some of my other videos, please go check them out, not only do I do videos talking about music theory and explaining to you guys and guitar tips and tricks and stuff like that, but I also do composing videos, for instance right now we're doing a series where I compose a song and show you my process, which you can check out in the cards are right there, along with the Yate series, but also composing tips and tricks and lessons about chords, other times I transcribe a lick that I either think is interesting or the lick itself is a little bit different from what whoever played it usually plays. And of course the series bass tricks for guitar because for those who don't know I actually started out on bass and gigged for a couple of years before I eventually moved on to guitar. So when I came to guitar playing I guess I brought some things from my bass playing that maybe some of you who didn't really start out on bass either don't think about or even don't think about it consciously. So if you play guitar or any instrument for that matter and you didn't really start out on bass, I guess you can check out that series. There's probably something you can learn from it. But yeah, I guess that's it. Again, thank you so very much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and on all the notifications. Follow me on social media, and if you can, share this video on social media. I'd highly appreciate it. Check out some of my back catalog, and cheers!